Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel Ray here and today I'm going to be doing a video that's all about cross stitch and yarn. Okay, so lots of knitting at the end of this video, but we're going to start with cross stitch because that's primarily the, the purpose and the function of me making these videos. I do this every two weeks, so if you want to, ch to follow my channel, my channel is mainly about diamond painting. Uh, but I do love cross stitch and I will be doing more cross stitch in the future So I'd love it if you join me for that. So without any further ado, let's get into this I am so excited to share with you the little bit of progress that I had in the past two weeks and haul Okay, so um, It's been it's been an interesting two weeks um, some of you who who follow my normal everyday channel um, you might know that I was laid off about three weeks ago almost four weeks ago and so I've had a lot of downtime to do crafting um, and I've kind of like just let myself go wherever I feel like going at the moment whereas normally I'm kind of more regimented in the way that I do my crafting because I have a YouTube channel. Um, but in the past few weeks, I've just kind of done whatever I feel like doing on whatever day. So um, at the beginning of, was it two weeks ago now? Oh no, it's only been a week since then. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. There was a 24 hours of cross stitch challenge either last week or the week before. I can't really remember at the moment. It's all kind of blending together. You know how like you, you take some time off of work and it just, yeah, that's that's how my brain is right now. Um, so I worked on my Galaxy Unicorn. This is uh, Misty's Galaxy Opalescent Ada, mistyfabrics.com. I have a link down in the description. Um, I love this fabric so much. You have no idea. I mean, I love all of Misty's, but this particular piece is just fabulous. Um, so here is the progress on my unicorn. I think that it's actually turning out way better than I originally thought it would. However, I did run into a small problem and that is that I lost a color where I can't find a color. So I had to substitute with something that I had in my floss box, which was kindly given to me from a subscriber, all unlabeled floss. I don't think it's DMC floss, I'm not 100% sure, but it's it worked out anyway. Um, and you can't even tell there's a difference, I mean, unless you were like really, really close up. This is an 18 count, which is not my fave, um, I will say that, but it, it's looking really good. Now there was a, there was something that I saw later on, which is making this a lot easier, or will make it a lot easier when I go back to working on it soon. But um, that, I'll show you that in a moment. But I worked on, I finished this page, so you can see the clean line, right? That's the first page of the pattern. This pattern comes from Etsy. I can't find it on Etsy anymore. I don't know if that's common or not, uh, but it was gifted to me. Uh, the creator of this particular pattern was called Cats Coffee and Crafts, um, but now I can't find them at all. So I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, the, I finished the first page, which was the horn, the tip of the muzzle snout face, uh, and then the two front legs. Um, I finished that and I worked on the top of the head here, uh, page two, which is my first experience in kind of like a full coverage page. Now I'm working from printouts. I'm not working from, um, I'm not working from a PDF. So I printed out the fabric or sorry, I printed out the pattern to work on this and it's pretty difficult. So that has taught me that when I get to my heaven and earth design, which I'll talk about soon, I will not be printing. I will be using a tablet or something. I'll have to invest because <laughs> it is hard, y'all. It is hard. I, I'm old school. I use a highlighter. 
I'll show you in a little while. Um, I use a highlighter and I highlight all the symbols as I go. Um, so it does take me a little longer. Anyway, this took, I spent nine and a half hours on this and that's as far as I got in the 24 hours of cross stitch challenge over the weekend. But I thought I did a lot of work. I mean, nine and a half hours is a lot of work on one pattern, right? Um, I did, this is really important to me. Um, you can see here, there's an outline on the, it's hard to see, I know it's very, it's opal, so it's hard to see, but there's, there's a light outline here around the edges. I'm holding it like this so the opal doesn't blind you. Um, I first started at the top, worked my way around, and I got to about here using light effects. So I was using, um, E3865, maybe, um, in light effects. And I was doing all the outer stars, uh, which I was calling them. But unfortunately, light effects and opalescent do not work well together <laughs> at all. Um, so please just learn from my mistake. Don't do it. Um, I then substituted and went back to, um, to Blanc. I, 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 tore it all out, I fragged it all, and I redid everything in, in Blanc, and it looks much better now. I'm really, really happy with this. I wish you could see it. The stitches are super small, but I do like the effect. I just don't like how puffy, you're not gonna be able to see this, but it's very puffy when, when it's on 18 count, and I, I'm not really a fan. I know that some people like the full coverage of it, but it's just, it's not for me. But I will, I will keep going. I love it. I love it. And I love this Ada. It's beautiful. Anyway, moving on. Oh, and the needle minder is from my shop, rachelraycraft.etsy.com. Small plug. Okay. Um, that is that one. Love it. Can't stop talking about it. I can't wait for it to be done. My hair has gotten super long. So I did wash it last night. I don't know why it looks so weird in this light. Anyway, all right, stop looking at yourself, Rachel. Uh, I don't know if I have any progress on this, to be honest. And this is one of the things I wanted to ask you all watching, because it, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm forgetting how, how much time two weeks really is, and in the fact that I have trouble remembering two weeks ago. One week is fine, I can remember things week to week, but going back further than that, my short-term memory kind of drops off a cliff. So I don't remember if I showed you and what I showed you. Again, I don't really watch my own floss tube videos, but here you go. This is my Sassy Craft Along, um, Sassy Craft Along progress. I don't know if there has been progress this week, but I love this. I love I love the way it looks, and my husband loves it too, and he wants it up in our living room. I am waiting to get the classic color works in Granny Annie to do the dragon still. And all I have left is to finish the border and write mint. <laughs> mint, and then is not Anne here. But on the pattern itself, the pattern comes from Snarky Art Company on Etsy, and I have that linked in the box. Um, the the font that they use for the is not in, I don't like it. I want to change it, so I'm gonna try charting it myself in maybe my own handwriting. That would be awesome um, because I love I love this. I love the the font they're using for these words but I just do not like, it's like a Verdana. And for those of you who might be graphic design nerds or people who love to design their own patterns, it just irks me that it doesn't fit with the pattern very well. So yeah, that's that one. Hashtag cra sassy craft along, not crafty sass along, <laughs> like I keep calling it. I really like, I really like the way that it's turning out. And I, I hand dyed this myself. This is uh, just a normal, it, see how soft it is now? Um, this is a regular 14 count Ada from Michael's or Joanne's. It was gifted to me um, and I tea dyed this for, I wanna say six hours. 
and um, and it's very very brown so it does look very old uh, at first I thought it wasn't gonna work but I changed the colors changed the DMC colors um, from the pattern everything except the black of course um, to suit the color of the fabric so yeah that's that really like it um, it's it's so fast it's so quick that I um, I'm saving, the, you know, I'm kind of saving the la last bit for when I get that Granny Annie. And also the needle minder is, um, is a tea turtle pin, teaturtle.com. Love their little unicorns and stuff. Okay. Now, real talk. So I'll show you. This is, I'm not going to show you the full pattern, but I'm going to show you that, like, that right there. That's highlighter. Yeah. That's how I do these. Um, this is my, you can't really see it right now. I'll take it out of the Q-snap while we talk. This is my Falcha Acarta kit from 123stitch.com. It was the first cross-stitch kit that I ever purchased. And I have decided I'm going to scrap it. Yeah, I just heard a sharp intake of breath there. Um, I started working on, I, I finished this bit here and then I moved over here and I realized, now y'all helped me um, the last floss tube and gave me ideas of how to get rid of the marks, right? Because I was a newbie and I put grid marks on my fabric in pencil. Um, Unfortunately, the threads are bleeding. The floss is bleeding, so I can't wash it. Wow. It's gorgeous, though. I love the pattern. I love the pattern, but I hate what I've done. Also, <laughs> the piece of fabric that they gave me is so small, I don't feel confident that I could properly frame this when it gets finished. So I'm gonna scrap it. I'm gonna scrap it, I'm gonna restart it. Um, probably not anytime soon. Again, I was such a noob, like I made all of my mistakes on this. I'm getting better as you can see, like I think, I think I've think i come a long way from here. <laughs> but, um, and while I love, I love this pattern to death, I think it's just not, it's not gonna happen. I'm not going to frame this in the state that it's in. Also, the kit came with non-DMC, and I can really tell the difference in the quality of the, the, the kit versus DMC. So I'd like to re-kit this in DMC, which they have a color conversion on the chart, which is good. Um, I'd highly recommend the kit it's just the size of the Ada is too small. I got it really dirty. Like, look, can you see this? Yeah, gross, gross. All that because I was a noob and I didn't take care of it. The needle binder is from Ginger Stitch AU. So any Aussies who want a little boxy needle binder, go check out his shop on Etsy as well. Unfortunately, the, the, the magnet on it is not as strong as I would like it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my little fox and set the needle aside. Okay, so sad times. I'm sorry to say goodbye, but at the same time, I, I know I can do it better. I know I can do it faster. And I feel like if I restarted on a fabric that I like, um, which isn't stiff and hard and gross and gridded really prominently right in the middle where there's very little stitching, um, I, will, um, I will enjoy it better. And that decision did not come lightly, trust me. Um, but it's a good learning experience and, and I appreciate that. I will probably keep this um, Unless there's someone out there who, well, 
No, because then I'd have to give you the chart and everything. Unless, you know, if somebody really, really wanted it, I could probably send them the kit and everything. But I did, I also lost, um, I lost the black floss. I don't know how I did that. But anyway. Okay, that's that. That's that for now. One thing that I found during the week, uh, last, the week, yeah, a few days after uh, the, whatchamacallit, 24 hours of stitching challenge, sorry, words, uh, was a little tool that was used by Stitch All The Things, Christine. And it's called a needle trolley or a trolley needle, trolley needle. This cool contraption is like a lance for your finger. And I watched her stitch with me video. Now I work in hand or not in hand. I work without a frame for now. Like I work with Q-snaps. So I hold, I hold my Q-snap and I stitch one-handed uh, at the moment because I'm still looking for the perfect frame, right? And I do most of my stitching either in bed or in a recliner. Uh, I don't stitch at a desk or with a regular chair like I'm sitting in right now. So the way that I hold it is like, like so. Okay, I'm right-handed, obviously. So using my <laughs> using my left thumb, I hold down the thread as I'm pulling it through the back, and this helps it lay flat, which is incredible. Um, a really, really great tool. I wish I had found it sooner. Um, I probably, if I had had this or if I had known about this, I probably would have... Um, kept going with the Stitch Your Own Adventure on 18 Count. But I still don't like the way that 18 Count feels uh, with the, you know, how bunched up the threads are. So my Stitch Your Own Adventure is the Harry Potter stitch along that's going on this year. If you followed my floss tube, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, link down there. Check it out. It's amazing. Um, They've already released chapter one, and today, the 1st of February, they released the uh, behind the scenes of chapter one and what their reasoning was for doing the banners and all that stuff. Excuse me, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. Cold coffee. Mm. Um, and so I'm still waiting on my fabric from the craftykitten.co.uk. I ordered a piece called Flagstone, which is like a grayish modeled fabric, which I think will look really, really good for parchment. And the actual outline of all of the frames, the parchment page pages should show up on that fabric. So that's what I'm really excited about. With my other fabric that I was using, I'll show you. Reach. This is the fabric that I was using, and I have it all gridded and everything. Um, if you're new, uh, the the browns for the the light browns in the parchment pages would not have shown up. I don't think. I really miss this whip. I really miss working on this, um, but I am excited to start it again. Who knows, maybe one day I'll wanna do it on this and I'll do it again. I'll do it twice, I don't know. But anyway, this is this is that. And this fabric was, I think this was a Misty, is it not? I have, I have trouble remembering things. Anyway, I'm pretty sure this was a Misty, a parchment color. Um, not the, the one that she died specifically for the Stitch Your Own Adventure, but the closest thing I could get to it at the time, because that was last November, October, October, I bought that. So yeah, I missed this whip, um, but I'm really looking forward to getting the flagstone. I got flagstone 
um, in 20 count Ada, which is going to be so smaller than this uh, stitch wise, but it'll be one over one. So using less floss and a little finer. Um, I really, I love my snowy owl. I really miss him or her, whatever. Anyhow, okay. So, by the way, my my Stitcher Own Adventure piece will be heavily modified. I am going, I'm going full modified um, because I like the look of, I like the idea that Stuart had, don't get me wrong. Uh, I do feel a little bit guilty that I like the modification so much, but at the same time, because it's a stitch your own adventure, you have a lot of creative control over it. And I really thank Stuart for creating the, the, the bones and the frame of this so that all of us can get really creative with it. And as a, as a Slytherin, I'm the kind of person that waits to see what, what the aesthetic will be and how it's going to develop before I make a decision. Um, typical. Uh, I'm doing the same with another thing and I'll tell you about that too because we are at haul <laughs> and purchases. Okay, no finishes, obviously. It's 20, 22 minutes into the freaking thing. Um, you should know this by now. Haul. Okay, first thing that came in, aside from the, the trolley needle, is my fabric for my Heaven and Earth designs. This is, I'm not going to take it out of the bag just yet. I purchased this on Amazon. This is a 25 count, easy count Lugana Zweigart. Um, so it already has the, the lines in it, which is perfect because it's a full coverage piece and I don't want to have to grid. Um, it's what's recommended for the piece and the piece that I will be working on is called The Soul of the Rose. Um, by uh, Waterford, I think, originally. And um, I was gifted that chart. Thank you so much, Michael. I am so excited. So I went ahead and I purchased this. Okay, and this is called um, Flora Shell Needle Crafts. And I just searched it on Amazon. I have it linked down below. But um, they sent me this little piece of paper that just has, they have another shop. By the way, guys, um, I am based in Ireland. I probably should say that at the beginning of my floss tube because all of my links are going to be European based. Um, there are so many YouTubers out there, floss tubers, who are specifically American and I can't really always get the American stuff. So just FYI, um, Amazon UK, um, I think it cost me 10 bucks. I can tell you, or pounds, this is all going to be pounds. So that was, yeah, nine pounds, 95, not a bad price for it at all. Um, I did have to pay shipping on that because it wasn't in the Amazon factory. However, uh, I went ahead and I did that and about, <laughs> was it the day that I received it? Maybe that I made the, the decision. To look through my stash, my hoard, which is just here, uh, which is not a lot at all. I have two, two boxes, so um, bear with me. The this top box, this is the Stitch Your Own Adventure floss already bobbined, bobbinated, as we like to say, um, and and its own box. So this is specifically for Stuart's project, um, and that is off to the side that's since that's already kitted up I don't want to take any floss from that at all except maybe 310 because I think I'm gonna to have to get a cone uh, these two boxes right here are the rest of my my floss and as you can see there isn't a lot I have it numbered so this is 0 to 990 not 998 I think is the highest because and then this is the 3000 range um, I went through those looking for floss for the, for the Heaven and Earth Designs project. Unfortunately, I had like zero of the called for colors. And of course I want to go for called for. 
So I'm minding my own business. Yeah, this is only a few days after I filmed my last vlog too. I think it was on the Wednesday because uh, I was talking to my friend Jessie, who I've mentioned before. She's a close friend of mine. We, we've been friends for like 10 years or something. Um, and we used to live really close to each other in Virginia. So that's, yeah. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> we were talking and, you know, she was pretty much enabling me and she was telling me that there was a sale on Michael's that day. So what did I do? I got out my laptop and I placed an order. Well, it was actually, it, it was three orders. They had such a good coupon that I placed three orders uh, worth of floss because you can only go up to a certain number of items in your cart before it stops allowing you to put items in the cart and um, three orders later I am now fully kitted for my heaven and earth design I'm simply waiting for my floss to arrive because Jessie is an amazing friend and she can send me floss and I can pay the postage and buy the floss and she will actually physically send it to me you have no idea what a godsend you are. I'm really excited to to get it because I can then start immediately. I have I have everything I need to get started. The only thing I don't have which can wait is a frame. Now, excuse me. I have emailed the seller or the the creator of the Elan Elon Elon um, stands in America. I tried going to the website and placing an order, um, but it wouldn't allow me to check out. And I don't know if he's like put, put the website on hold, if he's no longer making stands. I really want one of his stands because I love the design. I love that it's all wood. Um, it just makes me want to go and try again. <laughs> But I did send him an email and I asked him if there was any possible way that he could, you know, send this to Ireland or or not. Um, it's possible. I have family and friends, obviously, in America who would be willing to ship that to me from from their homes. But um, I'm not 100% sure if he's actually making them still or not. He might be taking a break, he might be retired. I'm not sure, but um, there's a there's a little voice in the back of my head that says he's probably, he's probably done making the frames and he's not answering emails anymore. So just to move on, but um, I have a few options. Thank you all so much for all of your options and your and your feedback, all the links that you sent me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, at the moment, I'm looking at the Lakeside Needle Works, Lakeside Needle Crafts, Lakeside Needle Craft, uh, Dakota, UK. They have a master embroidery lap stand, which goes between your legs, you know, and, and you hold it down uh, while you're in your chair. Um, there's that one, which I would love to get to work with my Q-snaps. As you know, I love, I love Q-snap and nine by nine, to eight by eight is my my happy place. 11 by 11 is just a little too big for me at the moment. Um, but I do want to get like a desk stand, but I can wait, I can wait on it um, with, the, with the scroll frames. So Marusha, M-A-R-U-S-S-I-A dot com, Marusha. Don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry if I butchered it. It's, they, they are a German, company based in Germany um, and they have a lot of different styles which is the ones that my friend Heike Stone Cold Coffee Crafts that she uses and she has a floor stand but I'm thinking about getting the the recliner stand um, there's a few different styles I don't know um, because I've never worked on a uh, a project of this scale. This is a 50 by 70 centimeters piece of fabric. Like, it's big, it's big. Um, I, I don't know how I want to attack it. Honestly, truthfully, I'm probably still gonna use the teeny tiny Q-snap because um, I prefer working in a smaller area and one page at a time is plenty. I, I don't think I want to attack it any bigger than that. I am a complete noob when it comes to full coverage. 
never done it before. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just rabbiting on now. Anyway, I got all of the floss for the Soul of the Rose, so I'm really excited to start on that once it arrives. Let me just double check. I have, I have notes, people. I have notes. Okay, more haul. <laughs> I was like, I knew I was forgetting something. I, I received in the mail my uh, Soda Stitch order, which I purchased from Stitchholic on Etsy. Uh, and it is, I'm not giving anything away by showing you the fronts. It's the story of the Zodiac. One and two. Aren't they adorable? I absolutely love them. So as I was, t I was telling the story a few floss tubes ago that I didn't know any better and a long time ago and I went on to um, AliExpress and I purchased a little keychain. It looked like this of the Pisces girl because I'm a Pisces. Um, fortunately, it never arrived. I never got it. When I realized what I had done um, or what they had done, I went ahead and I bought both patterns of the story of the Zodiac because I thought that they were so super cute. And I think that these would make excellent gifts to people who, who enjoy the Zodiac stuff. You know, they're quick stitches. If you do one at a time, or you could do all of them. They have lots and lots of ideas for you here. Um, Keychain, cell phone strap, cushion. Um, they have these rolls. Uh, bank book wallet. I don't know what that is. Um, acrylic coasters, they're saying. A mini pillow. So when you do purchase it, you have lots of options there. And then they have all of them together in a line just like this as well. I think that the way that I would do it is just one at a time. But that's just me. They're so cute. I love Gemini. And um, here's, I'll just put it on this page for a minute because I <laughs> want to give everybody a moment to look at their own. And if you're interested in purchasing the chart, I have a link to both of them down below in the description. So cute. So these came in in excellent condition as well. They came in a plastic sleeve um, and <laughs> I had a major flashback to when I lived in Korea because um, if you don't know this, I lived in Korea for four years uh, as a teacher and it was just really cute. There is a spelling error. <laughs> There is a spelling error inside the chart, but it's really cute and um, and I can appreciate it. So anyway, all right, um, something else that I purchased, oh, which I don't have on hand. Hang on one second. Okay, um, something to do with heaven and earth designs. I was thinking for a really, really long time how to organize the floss and I will show you exactly how I'm going to organize the floss once I've actually done it. Um, but I asked for your feedback on how to organize and I listened. I'm not going to bob in everything. I'm going to use floss away bags. I purchased these on Amazon as well. And these have one hole punch in the corner. However, I'm going to be making a second hole punch. And I'm going to be using reinforcement rings, which are these um, stickers, which you put around the, the hole to, to keep them safe. I'm going to be using floss away bags in a small binder. I know you can find them in, in shops like um, in Ireland, Mr. Price, um, in your local um, news agents but just a small, you know, a small binder, which would hold this. And I'm going to have it so that they're in numerical order. Um, I'm going to put the DMC number and I'm going to put the symbol on the front. That's just the way that I'm going to do it. 
it'll be tedious, but it'll be safe. And it means that I don't have to bobbin anything. Or I might bobbin as I go because it's very time consuming and there's 125 colors. <laughs> so I bought um, two 100 packs and this one, this has like, I don't know how many, a thousand reinforcement rings, so it'll be fine. That's just a little information if you're looking for a way to uh, organize your Heaven and Earth Designs floss. I have max color, so I needed I needed something. <laughs> I thought about it. Um, I'm torn between the binder and the basket. Um, my friend Jen Jen, Jen Jen's Creations Wall on YouTube, she uses a basket, but I think there's just too many colors and I have lost floss before and I can't afford to do that. It needs to be secure. <laughs> it either needs to be in a container like the these boxes or it needs to be where it won't fly away. Um, it's very important for me. Okay. Let's talk about stuff that I bought that I don't have here at hand, but is coming. There's a shop on Etsy called Barbaral Creations who does fabric, hand-dyed fabric, and she is based in, good question, is it control? It's control click. I promise I know how to use a computer. It's just been a while. She's in Hungary. <laughs> She's in Hungary and she hand dyes fabric. She also has designs, fabric, um, floss, uh, charts, all kinds of stuff. And I went ahead and I bought two pieces of fabric from her. I got a 14 count opalescent Ada called Orchid. It's a beautiful purple, but more on the pink side, a little lighter. Um, it's a gorgeous color and I would like to use that for my secret friend stitch along that I'm doing with some friends of mine. You will see that probably in the summer, to be honest, before I get all the pieces, maybe spring. Yeah, later, later. Um, but it's a beautiful piece of fabric. I'll try to put the picture up so you can have a look. And I also bought a 16 count regular Ada in the color olive oil, which is this one. Um, and if you have followed me for a while, you might know what this is for. It's a future idea project that I may or may not do. I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, but this is a just in case fabric because if I decide that I want to stitch it. Does anybody else follow stitch alongs until they get about halfway and then go, yeah, I think I'll start that. That that's kind of where I'm at right now. The only, um, the only stitch alongs that I'm going to join this year that I've decided on, because I haven't really talked about this is I'm definitely going to be in the, obviously the stitch your own adventure, Harry Potter. And I'm definitely going to be in the, um, oh God, Poof, it just disappeared. Uh, I have all of these names like flashing through my brain right now. It's like, it's like tunnel vision and it's like, whew, 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 like Star Trek or something. Uh, <laughs> so the only, the only other one is Stiach. So I'm obviously going to start that with the whole group, with the team and all of that. No hesitation whatsoever, because I just like the community aspect of it. And it's totally separate from my floss tube. So it's like there's a group of girls over here and we're going to do our thing. And it will be on floss tube, but it's like its own thing. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, I'm super excited for that. I'm excited to be on Team Stip Sips and Stitches again, where uh, we we don't count our T's. We don't, what was our catchphrase? Anyway, uh, <laughs> the those are the two stitch alongs that I'm definitely doing for sure. There are so many stitch alongs this year that I have decided to pass them up 
unless I like the finished outcome. There's only a few where I'm still contemplating. Um, for, exa for example, um, the Peppermint Purple Black Work Style, which looks amazing. I've seen people doing that in variegated floss. Uh, like the one, oh my God, the one that I love the most is the rainbow floss. So they just have rainbow variegation throughout the whole thing. And it's just gonna look fantastic. That one kind of, it kind of makes me feel a little intimidated and I don't know why. I think my, my back stitching could use a lot of work because um, I'm, I'm still very new, very, very new. All right, um, let me see. So that, that all went down. I'm not gonna tell you what the possible stitch along is. You probably know what it is if you watched me. But let's move on. I think that's all the stitchy stuff. I'll have more next time. Uh, the, the next thing is yarn and knitting. So as you know, I started knitting a few weeks ago and my original plan was to start the Cabin Path Shawl, which is by Helen Stewart. I think is her name. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Link is down below on Ravelry. Um, my, my idea was to start with this shawl, but then I came across a Facebook post, I think it was, um, where I saw that there was a an animal collective, an animal rescue guild, a crafting guild, who was creating joey pouches and um, koala mittens and things like that for rescue animals in Australia due to the bushfires. So I went ahead and decided to make a joey pouch as my first project and I'm really really glad that I did because I learned a lot about knitting through this little joey pouch. Are you ready? It's finished. So here it is. Okay you can see where I messed up <laughs> but this is my little mini joey pouch. I'm gonna grab a little um, stuffed animal. I was gifted this little unicorn by my friend Pippa who lives in Tasmania, funny enough. Um, it's the only plushie I own, so. <laughs> this is what it would look like if a unicorn had to sleep in a pouch. So this is the outer liner of the of the little pouch. There is a cotton liner that is removable, uh, which will go inside and be changed several times a day. Um, but the idea is that the outer liner or the yeah the outer bag uh, will keep them warm. And so I finished. Uh, I nearly got discouraged at the beginning because I made some mistakes like I made at the top. It was supposed to be a stockinette stitch. I didn't know what that was and I was knitting, I was purling on the outside first. <laughs> um, and then I realized what I was doing and I, you know, a few rows in, it was what, three rows in? And then I was like, oh, okay, this is the knit side and that's the, you know, purl side. And then I think I was um, distracted and I did two rows the opposite way and then I got so far and then I did uh, like half ways the wrong way. Who cares? Who cares? It's, it's for the animals and they don't care, right? I just asked my unicorn if that was right. That's right. Um, so this is the little um, Joey pouch. Now they did ask that all crafting be paused. Don't send what you've created. Hold off so that they can do inventory first. And then when there's a need again, they will open it up again. So I will hold on to this until it is needed. Um, they did suggest that you donate it to a local shelter. I don't know if this would be of any use to a local shelter here. Um, 
because it's mostly cats and dogs that get rescued and donkeys and horses and stuff and I don't think a horse's hoof would even fit in here so um but it's cute and I like it now this yarn is mistletoe this came from knit crate uh, I'm going to really quickly talk about Knit Crate. So Knit Crate is a subscription box that you can get every month. And your first box is only $5. Uh, after that, it's $24.95 in US uh, every month, free shipping. Um, and you get two, two hanks of yarn every month. So my first box, I got two hanks of this beautiful Vitalana, uh, which is dyed exclusively for Knit Crate. This was the Lofty DK in Mistletoe. I went ahead and um, so I, I, I made this and I still have like, I don't know, a third of the ball left. Um, I went ahead and I ordered two more of these. So these are on the way um, because I love the feeling of this and I want to make a scarf out of it. It's, it's so super soft on the skin I, I think a cowl would work really well. I don't have many cowls at all, so this would make a perfect cowl. Um, I did get a second knit crate, but I didn't make a specific video on it. I do have a referral link below, so if you'd like to get your first box for $5, please click the link. And just to let you know, full disclosure, if you do buy the, the crate, I will get some some feed or not feedback. I'll get a little coupon to keep giving me more yarn in the future discounts. So I do appreciate anybody who does go ahead and get their first box for five dollars. Um, it will help me to continue uh, showing you the knit crates. So the second knit crate that came out, I get the chill out box because I like the more blues and purples and kind of cool colors. I got these two. Wow, they look so good on camera. So these are by Knitology Brooklyn Boy Knits. These were also designed specifically for the knit crate. And aren't they gorgeous? Now, I don't know if I would pair them together necessarily, but these are worsted weight. And I'll, I'll explain. So this one is called Empire. I love this. I absolutely love this. This is a 100% superwash merino wool. It suggests a five to six millimeter uh, size needle, which in US is eight to 10. Um, machine wash cold, tumble dry low. So it can be, it could be, can be put in the dryer. Uh, I, I think that it's a little less vibrant in person it's just that the sun has come out ireland uh our weather is crazy and um and it's just this beautiful uh light blue to dark blue i want to say it's like a 796 to 823 if you go dmc so that is that one love it and then the second one right here it's kind of like a blue to gray to purple, which is beautiful in its own right. This is also 100% super wash merino. This is called Royal Court. This is also worsted, same size needle they recommend. And they're both really soft, but much thicker, much thicker than the mistletoe. Mistletoe feels a little bit more I don't know how to put it. It's just super soft. This one has 48% um, merino, 20% baby alpaca, 32% organic cotton. Very special. Um, these are super special too. I believe that this would look really good as a jumper. So a jumper, sorry, is a sweater. <laughs> um, Irishisms. So Yes, this would look really cool as a sweater. I would love to make like a cardigan or something, but I, I think you would need a second one to do that. I'm not sure. Uh, these are 205 meters or uh, 225 yards each. So this was the uh, January crate and the February crate is on its way. So excited. Um, 
I did change my box for next month, so watch out for that. I'll continue to show these off in my the end of my floss tube videos in case anybody's interested in yarn. Uh, but yeah, link down below, beautiful stuff. Um, are you ready? <laughs> so excited to share this with you. So as you know, I ordered from the Comra Yarns from Waterford. Kamra Yarns is on Etsy. Uh, the shop owner's name is Monica. Now she has hand dyed yarn. And the one that I purchased first is called Heather. This is the ball. I, I have had to make balls because they come in hanks. Um, and we'll talk about that in a moment because, oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I put that on the keyboard and then it was like, here, let me press all of the buttons. I'll fix that in a minute. So this is Heather. Gorgeous. It comes, it has purple, dark purple, pinks, light pinks, golds and greens and browns. It's fabulous. Absolutely stunning. I love the colorway. Now, when I went back, I went back and I tried to purchase another, another hank of, of Heather, but unfortunately it was sold out. So I went ahead and I got over myself and I contacted Monica, the shop owner, and I said, I'd really, really love to have more Heather because I am worried that what if I don't have enough to finish the shawl that I'm working on? And um, she said, it's no problem. She can, she can make any colorway you want uh, whenever you want. So I said, there's no rush on it, but just in case I run out, um, I would love to buy another one. And I'd love to buy more for my stash anyway, because it's just, it's my color. But while I was there, <laughs> we were talking about this for the last few videos. Um, I bought a black metallic yarn, which I thought would go well, except when I touched it, next to this one, I realized that it was going to catch all the time. It was going to make this really fuzzy. So I said, okay, not this one. So then I went and I purchased, what did I purchase after that? Oh no, I was thinking in my head that maybe this one would go well, but then that is just a little too in your face, isn't it? So I went back to her shop and I bought sea glass, which I'll have to put the picture of the Hank here. Gorgeous. This is the ball. Absolutely stunning. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I went ahead and I balled it up obviously. Um, and I did that two days ago. <laughs> And I am flying through this shawl, y'all. Okay, I started the shawl right after, right after we, you know, pretty much after the minute that I finished this. I had to rip this out like six times. I would get to row 10 and then I'd realize that I made a mistake, something didn't look right, or that I was doing the stitch wrong. So I watched a lot of YouTube um, whenever I don't know how to do something, I search for it on YouTube. Duh. <laughs> I make YouTube, so I know, I know that feeling, right? So I ripped it out several times before I finally caught the, the gist of it. And I'm so excited to share this with you all. Um, this is my first ever like proper knitting project. And I know that it's probably wonky and it's on the needles so it's gonna look weird but this is it this is the cabin path shawl now just so that you can get an idea like i'm trying to stretch it out a little bit so it's there i am currently at 15 percent complete this is the center back and I hope oops, I'm gonna have to hold it this way sorry I'm new to this 
This is the lacing detail that runs along the, the front. I think it looks really pretty. This is where the center back seam is, or center front, depending on how you're gonna wear the shawl. And this is where you make one left and make one right. And that's the color changes. And I think that these two colors really work together and it's not too, too over the top. Like the blue, I feel like the blue would have been a little over the top. They relate to each other in the browns and it's, it's just fab. I love this color combination. So that's that. And I'm really excited. So I keep, every time I, I finish a few rows, I like, go like this. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so anyway, um, I have been spending almost all of my waking hours on this. I haven't diamond painted. I haven't, I haven't cross stitched. I've just been knitting, which is probably an issue. <laughs> but honestly, like this is coming together so well and I want it so bad. I feel like I could probably have this finished by my birthday if I really, really try, but I do want to put in a few hours of cross stitching in the next two weeks because this is all I've done. Now, um, a question that was asked several times in my last two videos is what kind of needles I use. These are four millimeter circular needles. There's a hundred centimeters of cordage here. So I have the link down in the description of this video for you. I realized, thanks to this beautiful project, that I'm loving knitting, which is something I did not expect. It came out of nowhere, okay? Um, never knitted in my life. So this is all new to me. But once I realized how much I love it and how much, how happy it makes me to knit, for myself, not for others, <laughs> um, aside from this little thing, is that I went ahead and I ordered more yarn, okay? So I have the Knit Crate, and I'm also going to have some other really fun stuff. Are you ready? Now, I don't have any pictures for you aside from maybe the thumbnail, but I'm not gonna go ahead and put that in here because I don't wanna get struck for copyright. There is a shop on Etsy called Curio Yarns. She also has a floss tube. And I, I was searching Etsy for advent calendars for this coming year, okay? That's, that's, where, my, that's where my headspace is. And I'm looking online and I'm trying to find someone who is on my side of the pond who will, you know, have a have an advent calendar for later this year. I thought, you know what, I'll go ahead and invest in it now so that I don't have to worry about it closer to Christmas. Because the truth is, is that I have more money at the beginning of the year than the end of the year. <laughs> so I was looking advent calendar on Etsy and boom, up pops the Witcher. The Witcher uh, yarn club. There's a three month and a six month. And I was like, I have to join this yarn club. Now, just to give you a little backstory, Curio Yarns does a lot of darker colors. She's more of a gothic style shop. She does a lot of beautiful colorways, but are, they're really rich and dark. And I love that, I love that. So. I know you wouldn't think that, but I, I do. Um, by the way, this, um, someone asked me where the, my, my scarf and my shawl poncho thing, they're both from the same place, but I don't remember exactly where my grandmother bought them for me. Aren't they beautiful? And it's like this little cute poncho. I think it came from Hallmark. <laughs> um, it's my grandma. She's, she's a beautiful person. Um, so I'm just bringing up the information here so that you can see it. I went ahead and signed up for six months. Um, it says each month, oh, sorry, signups close on the 6th of February. So you have five days to decide if you want to join me or not. I'm not trying to enable you, but look at it, please. Um, she is in the UK. Uh, primary fiber is wool. 
Secondary is nylon. It will go for six months. Signups close on Thursday, the 6th of February. Each month for six months, starting in February, you'll receive a single skein of yarn, which I hand dye inspired by the Witcher series. You can choose between Merino Nylon, Merino Sport, or Merino Nylon Sock or Fingering. Sorry, Sock or Fingering. I chose Fingering because I like the I like the feel of it on the needles. Um, please note that it's a yarn club pre-order. The first yarn will ship out on on Valentine's Day. So we have uh, February, March, April, May, June, and July, right? Uh, the shipping cost is for the for all six parcel for the full cost of six different parcels because you have to spread it out. So please keep that in mind when you look at the price. Um, you are getting approximately 400 meters per 100 grams of the fingering sport and or no fingering sock um, and the sport is 300 meters four ply weight. Uh, the needle gauge is slightly smaller than what I'm using here. It is a 3.25. Anyway, it says it's um, suitable for different projects like socks, shawls, jumpers, sweater, cardigans, and baby garments. It's soft but durable. Uh, one skein is normally enough for socks or a smaller shawl. But if you need more, I will ensure that they are from the same dye lot. So she is going to make more according to this. Um, she gives care instructions, etc., etc. You can have a look at it, um, but please just have just have a look. It's incredible. Uh, I'm really excited for that project. I it's it's a lot. It's a lot of of yarn so I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet I want to look for a pattern where I can use like a combination of all the different colors you know six different colors in the one garment that will look cool so it's probably gonna honestly it's probably gonna be one of these I love this I wear this all the time um, it's perfect it's warm um, and it's bands so I could use the colors over and over again if I wanted to. So I may just mirror this and um, and go from there. I have no idea how this was made. It was sewn together. So yeah. Anyway, that's one really exciting yarny thing that I have going on. Sorry, I just explained the whole thing to you, but hey. And then there's more. I told you about the 16 year old knitter who just started a podcast. Uh, <laughs> link down below. Her Etsy shop is Ruby and Rose's yarn. She's decided that she's going to do a season of minis, I think for the year. I went ahead and signed up for March. So March's colors are like, you know, bluebells, daffodils, hyacinth, you know, it's, it's bright and beautiful. And I went ahead and I ordered her skeins, the, their mini skeins, and I'd like to make a cowl in the in the same style as Michelle Bendy stitching. I believe that's called the House of Sweets cowl uh, or something similar, something which will bring out all of the shades. I may in fact just buy the pattern from Ruby and Rose's yarn and use her own pattern for it because her patterns are also really, really pretty, but I don't know if there'll be six different color pretty. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And also, uh, <laughs> I don't have it here and I wish I did. I'll have it on Monday. Real talk. As you know, I had to wind these by hand and it is really, really time consuming. I think it took me 45 minutes per ball, per hank, to make a ball. I was looking online because, you know, I was talking to my friend, Mrs. Coffee, uh, crafting with Mrs. Crochet and Coffee. Check her out. She does a lot of crochet and everything, too. Um, she, she told me that I should get a yarn winder. So I'm looking online and 
I'm looking at the yarn winder and it's like it's like plastic and then you you attach it to the table so that it doesn't wiggle all over the place and um, I kept going to the website putting it in my cart and then going no there has to be another way well there is another way I don't remember how I stumbled across this. Oh, actually I do. No, I do. I was looking on Etsy for yarn winder. Cause I thought somebody must have a wooden yarn winder. They do exist. They are very expensive. Uh, I think it was like 55 euros for the item cost. And I don't remember the shipping cost, but it was very expensive. And I was like, Argh. Um, I've already spent well over my, my budget, which I don't make a budget, but like in my head, I have a certain amount of money that I spend in a month and whew, well over that this month. Um, I was about to say, sorry, mom, but yeah, <laughs> anyway, I found a stick. It's called a Nostapinna. N-O-S-T-E-P-I-N-N-E, -N -N -E, Pinna. I would encourage you to look at a YouTube video of how to use a Nostapinna. Essentially, it's a stick. You wrap the yarn around it and then you twirl the stick as you make loops around it. And it makes a cake of yarn, which has a center pull. Perfect. Perfect. The reason this is perfect is because at the moment I have balls, which when they unwind, I have to put it in, in my bowl. I didn't show you my bowl. This is my beautiful bowl. I have this gorgeous, um, handmade bowl, uh, not by me. Uh, and you know, when you pull on the yarn, the, the ball moves. Yeah. And, and they make specific yarn bowls, but yarn bowls are expensive as well, where they have the little swirly cut out thing. Right. So in my head, I, I like to justify things. And so I justified that a yarn ball is more expensive. It takes a lot of work to wind this ball. I have to put the hank around two, two chairs, sit straddling the chair and wind it up, right? Or stand and wind it. Oh, it, it takes a lot of energy, right? I wish I had a kid so that I could employ them to do these jobs for me that I don't want to do. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Nostopinas are great because you can just twirl and make cakes in whatever sizes you want. And so I went and bought one. I'm going to warn you now that an Ostopinna looks like a sex toy. Yeah. Um, don't open the link at work or you might get teased, but I have a link to the one that I purchased down below. It is a dark wooden color and it, it'll match, you know, this anyway. Uh, don't worry about all that stuff in the corner. Um, but that is the last purchase that I made for yarny stuff this month. Last month, January. Now we're in a fresh month. <laughs> and I am, I am going to hold off on all yarn purchases this month. I'm not going to purchase any more yarn this month. I promise. Because I have already got a lot of stuff on the way. Mid-February, mid I will be getting The Witcher part one. So I need to find something to use with that. And I'll also be getting my knit crate soon. So there's that as well. Plenty of yarn for February. Uh, and then March, I will get at the beginning of March, I believe, uh, from Ruby and Roses. So very excited about that. I have plenty of projects to be working on right now. And I honestly, truthfully, 100% won't be doing plans. And I'm going to tell you why here at the end of the video. I know I've gone on quite a bit and I hope you enjoyed this floss tube. I didn't expect it to be this long because I was like, I didn't do any stitching. One of the reasons why I don't do plans is because I have a 
maybe I have a mental block of when I say I'm going to do something by a certain time, I either get myself wrapped up in a ball of anxiety trying to get it done on time, or I feel guilty if I don't get it done. And to be completely honest with you, this, you know, crafting is supposed to be fun and carefree and I'm, I'm done putting limitations on myself. So I'm going to work on things when I feel like working on them. I don't, I, I, I joined the Magical Stitches, Magical Stitches and Literature group on Facebook last year before they started the Disney um, tour. And if you don't know what that is, basically it's a Facebook group to motivate you to do a lot of stitching. I found it to be a little overwhelming and that was in just the first week. I left. I'm sorry to my team. I'm sure there will be more people that join so it won't be that big of a deal and I'm sure they're sorry to see another person go but I couldn't keep up. There was weekly homework, monthly homework, and the overall yearly stitching challenges. And I thought that it was just a little too much pressure. Um, they don't intend it to be that way at all. Some people work really well that way, but I don't. And, um, and I just prefer to work on stuff when I feel like it. So I might, I might incorporate my own system later on of how I'm going to do my projects. I've heard there are some people that do a 24 hour rotation off the grid needle arts. I think Caroline, she does that. Um, and Heike is doing that now too. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that, but we'll see 24 hours on one project and then move on to the, to the next whip. Um, it sounds like a good idea. I just don't know if I'll, if I'll be able to do that. I have a lot of crafts going on at the moment. Um, and I already feel under pressure in my own, in my own head, diamond painting, cross stitch and needle stuff. So yeah, I don't know what to say other than I'm really enjoying myself. I, I love shopping. So that part is easy, but, um, I have a lot to do and, um, and I'm sorry that to see the Irish Falcha Carta drop off like that, but I will bring it back eventually. I do want to hang it up in my house. I have the pattern, and if I just buy the floss again, I'm sure I could start over on a fresh piece of fabric that I actually enjoy stitching on. That's the thing. So guys, with that being said, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for joining me today on Floss Tube. Uh, what number is this? Number eight? Um, I really, I really appreciate you coming back and watching this every month or every twice a month. Uh, but I may have to start doing this weekly if I, if I get into the cross stitch fever. So we'll see. Um, this week's question at the end of the video is, uh, what should I name this guy? If you have a, a name suggestion for my little, for my little, uh, Pega Unicorn. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, Pippa, for this little, little guy. He works perfectly in my pouch. <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed. I will see you all very soon in my next video. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Take care, guys. Bye.